Everyone is switching to TypeScript these days. TypeScript is now the most commonly PR'd language on GitHub, above even JavaScript. I'm Matt Pocock. I'm the author of TotalTypeScript.com, which is very, very beautiful, which has a free tutorial for beginners if you fancy it. And we're going to investigate why everyone is moving to TypeScript. There's something wrong with this code, and you can't see what it is because we're using JavaScript. We have app equals document.getElementID app that seems all fine but if we were to try to run this code we would get undefined is not a function that's because get element by id has a typo in it and we won't even know that until we get to the browser but if we try to run this code in typescript which would be get element by id like this then it's going to yell at us right here it's going to say property get element by id does not exist on type document did you mean get element by id and you look at this and you go, what the hell is this error trying to say? But what it's telling us is it's telling us that something doesn't exist on this object. Like TypeScript's error messages are sort of famously hard to read and hard to pass. But when you get used to them, you actually realize it's like an English teacher looking over your shoulder, giving you little red marks to tell you exactly what you should do. So it's telling us, did you mean get element by ID? If we copy and paste that in, now our function is going to run. So this is the first key of TypeScript is you get your errors actually inside your IDE instead of needing to switch tabs and go over to the um, to like the runtime and this might sound like a small thing but actually time to error is really really critical when you're building things fast TypeScript is also kind of like self-documenting and it means that your code stops being so error prone. If we look at this pretty simple code here, we've got an add and subtract, which sort of is doing what you expect. And then this result here, you think, okay, add, subtract, blah, blah, blah. So we're subtracting 10 for five, so that's gonna be five. So it's gonna end up being 10, right? No, if you ran this code, it would end up being 55 because we're passing in a string here where we should be passing a number. If we put this in TypeScript, then it's gonna like yell at us from the start because it says parameter A implicitly has an any type. Oh God, TypeScript, what are you saying to me? But what it's saying to you is that you can't like, you can see that this is being typed as any if you hover over it. And our rules that we've got, the strictness in our TypeScript configuration is telling us that we need to give this a type. So we can give each of these a number type and already it's giving us a nice little yell. That's very kind of you. Uh, so number, 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 number. And now it's saying that string is not assignable to parameter of type number. This one's pretty easy to read, right? We're passing in a string where we should be passing in a number. So in all of these function calls and however much you nest them, TypeScript will be able to understand what's going on and catch these stupid little errors that you put in. And it makes you a better developer because it keeps you focused. TypeScript is also crazy good when it comes to using external libraries. External libraries ship with their own type definitions attached to them, which means you get really, really smart inference based on how you're using them. Here we're using Express, which as you can see, it's got some kind of like meta information attached to it already. We're using app and we're saying app.getName. Um, but there's like a little error here. And you notice actually that we are getting some kind of like stuff in JavaScript, but that's because VS Code, which I'm using, actually uses TypeScript behind the scenes to power all of this cool information. But really like you're not gonna get any decent errors until you move to TypeScript. And TypeScript here, it noticed that it, we were using param before, but param is sort of like a function which returns a string. And like, if you use name here, like that seems fine, but if you use something else, then it's not fine. So it's like really interesting the way that TypeScript gives you a lot of support here. And we've not even gotten to the really cool bit. We can actually give like in Express, they have some they have some really cool type definitions and you can actually add different parameters to this and it will show up in the object that you get back from rec.params. So now it's telling me that, okay, I can't call name on this because the only thing available is ID. How on earth did it know that? If I say org ID, then org ID appears here too. Like it's giving me this incredibly like detailed set of errors just based on the path parameters that I pass in. TypeScript is crazy. Whether you're a front-end or back-end developer, a lot of what you're gonna be doing is like calling third-party APIs. Here I'm calling my third-party API and I'm getting back a Luke Skywalker thing in JSON here. And in JavaScript, this is kind of like typed as any, and I'm returning the hair color, okay? 
Well, in TypeScript, how is this going to help me? Well, I can say that the thing I get back from Luke Skywalker, in fact, if I change this here, so I'm going to make it a return to promise Luke, then this is actually going to be able to let me restrict what types I'm getting back from that third party API and actually get autocomplete on it. I happen to know that hair color happens to be a string, which is this cased, not this cased, meaning I'm going to get autocomplete on the stuff I get back from APIs if I'm willing to put in the time to type them. Sometimes these libraries or these uh, APIs come with their own type definitions, meaning you get type safety on these third party APIs you access. GitHub does that, Discord does that. That. It's incredible that you can just like autocomplete through, like autocomplete your way through an API without needing to even check the documentation. The final amazing thing about TypeScript is that it lets you get out of jail free if you want to. Let's say you have this really complicated function called to camel case keys and you're like, I have no idea how to type this. I'm going to need to take the thing that I like put in and then like convert it into a camel case version of the type. You get into all this crazy sort of type metadata and what you can do instead is you can just say any. Now inside here, I'm also just going to say as any inside there, the type errors go away and I'm free to use this as if it was normal JavaScript. Sure, I've lost a bit of type safety here, but I've gained a lot more speed Speed. And the reason that TypeScript is able to do this is because it's not really a strongly typed language. It's just types on top of JavaScript, which is designed to make you go faster. So that's why people are moving to TypeScript. It shows the errors faster in a more helpful way. It makes sure that you can use third party APIs and third party libraries effectively. It has an enormous community of like incredibly helpful developers, incredibly helpful integrations. And you can always just get out of jail free if you don't want to use it's more hardcore features. I've been Matt Pocock, like you can see some of this stuff in action using total TypeScript. I can't wait to show you more of these and make sure you subscribe for more.